Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. We are here at the R&D days and here it is a session on synergies, new opportunities to leveraging R&D funding and maximize impact. So what are the what is this session discussing today? As in fact uh, the uh, the way in which uh, we we can really maximize synergies but not for synergies as for themselves but because we want to maximize the quantity quality and impact of R&I and R&I invest, investments. So there are two ways to do it. Of course, we need uh, rules that can uh, simplify the, the synergies. At the same time, maybe rules are not uh, the only solution. So today we are going to see uh, how this synergy buzzword that has been in the air for many years can now really become a concrete and operationalized, hopefully in the next programming period. Because we are indeed now at a very important period, a cru crucial moment, in which uh, if we want to change things, we can do it. We are discussing the Horizon Europe regulation, we are discussing the cohesion policy regulation. We are discussing the state aid LOX exemption regulation uh, for R&I. So it is a crucial moment. We have listened to synergies, to the word synergy many times. There has been many operators trying to do synergies, a lot of discussion internal to the Commission. And we are here today to understand whether all these discussion and feedbacks we have received have helped in making a, a change in the future. So I'm here with the uh, very uh, important speakers and very knowledgeable speakers. The panel has uh, three, uh, two, two groups, uh, let's say is uh, commission representatives from the commission services that are in fact the one mainly responsible for synergies with the structural funds, uh, of Horizon with structural funds. Namely, we have uh, of course Anna Panagopoulou, uh, director for DG Research and Innovation. We have besides me, uh, Karl Sokup, uh, director for for DG competition and connected with us uh, we have Michele, uh, De, Nicola De Michelis uh, from DG uh, Regio, DG Regional and uh, uh, Urban Policies and this is the trio from the let's say from the Commission side and they will tell us uh, what is the progress and what are how the institutions, European institutions are meant to fa facilitate and uh, help uh, synergies to be operational and then on the other side we have uh, three other speakers uh, that are doing the work in the field in fact uh, managing authorities and we have uh, Stavrula um, uh, Pullu from uh, the Greek managing authorities. Uh, we have uh, um, Andrea Kutnar from uh, Slovenia, coordinator of a team in project. And we have uh, Monica Barney, uh, vice president of Tuscany region and president of Tour for Europe. So I don't want to waste much more time on that. And I go immediately to Anna Panagopoulou. So Anna, uh, we have discussed that this is a crucial moment uh, with uh, uh, Horizon Europe cohesion policies uh, that are discussed. What are the opportunities? Uh, the title of our uh, session uh, opened for synergies in this new phase. Thank you very much, Magda, for your question and good afternoon to everybody. I'm very pleased to be with all of you, with my colleagues, with the representatives from the regional authorities uh, to this uh, session. Uh, first of all, I would like to highlight that synergy start uh, uh, are the synergies between the services and between uh, the people, first of all. And I would like to thank uh, my colleagues, Carl and Nicola, that the last months, um, I would say the last year, we have been working very closely together between our services in order to deliver what we hope uh, it will be a new era for synergies. Uh, second, it is very important to highlight that synergy starts also at the political level. So we have the cohesion policy. We have the research and innovation policy. How we could bring these two policies closer to each other with a common denominator, the RNI spending, RNI investments, RNI funding. How we will be able to make a difference through putting together funding from different programs without putting to questions the objectives and the priorities that are set in each one of these programs. And third, we have the policy of uh, state aid, which is a very important cross cutty policy across the Commission, how we can bring it also in the field and we develop a package for synergies which will not jeopardize the policy that the European Commission has uh, put in place for state aid. Um, we have been managed to work very closely together and uh, under the context of the new financial perspectives where 
what the Commission expecting us to do is to reinforce the synergies within the, for, between the different programs because funding spending from public sector is not enough yet. It has never been enough. Nowadays, it's even less. Then what we have been requested all the services is to sit together and to try to find solution. So in a way, we can mobilize in the best possible way the funding available for research and innovation. And this is what we try to do, to find practical, legal ways and instruments to put in place the synergies. So, on the basis of a report that we have from the Court of Auditors uh, evaluating the implementation of Horizon 2020, the first attempt that we did is to simplify the use of the seal of excellence. Seal of excellence has been very successful, uh, not enough though, because there was uh, problems in the implementation of the instruments. It was very technically, it was more complex. With the new rules and the new use of the revised general block exception regulation, uh, we can be able to use the seal of excellence without a new technical evaluation and up to the same funding intensity and eligibility cost rules of Horizon. This is very important without any state aid notification that will facilitate the use of the seal of excellence uh, at local level by the managing authorities. The second issue that I would like to highlight is that now we have the possibility to, to, uh, to provide contributions that are coming from structural funds through the member states of the partnerships and those contributions to be considered as national contributions. This is very important because we will open even further the participation of member states to the European partnerships, in, in particular those member states that they don't have enough resources from their own, own national budget. The third area that we have been working very closely with our colleagues in DG Regio has been the possibility on a voluntary transfer of up to 5% of the third management program allocations in Horizon Europe. And this is, I repeat, is a voluntary contribution and will happen only in cases that there is an interest from the managing authorities to do so. For example, we know very well in the research and innovation program there are some very important parts like the European Research Council grants, like Maris Kodosko Curie, like the EIC, where some countries, in particular the lower performing member states, they don't have a high level of participation. It, by transferring this 5% of budget or up to 5% of budget, it will be possible to finance and to implement projects that now they are belonging to the reserve list as a full-fledged ERC or Maris Kolosko Curie project. And this is actually something that we have been uh, heard from many, many, many managing authorities and member states that would, should be done in order to increase their level of participation in important parts of the programme. I don't want to spend more time. I will not just to conclude by saying only by leveraging funding, only by working together inside the European Union, but also together with the Commission services and the Member States, this is the only way that we will be able to deliver in practice those synergies. And we are committed from our side in the deployment of the synergies package to provide more information, more clarifications of how this will happen and to engage to outreach events in the member states with the managing authorities together with the colleagues from DG Regio in order to explain how in practice synergies will be implemented. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Uh, it seems really a lot is going on and there's so much going on that I forgot in the beginning to say to everybody listening to us that uh, you can ask a question through Slido, slido.com uh, hashtag RI20 and that uh, we will stop uh, just uh, for a small uh, break of questions after the three commission speakers. So commission speakers to questions to commi uh, commission people, please, first and then uh, a second round of questions for the people from the uh, practitioners. So I give the floor now to Nicola. So Anna has uh, indeed mentioned uh, the links with cohesion policy. She mentioned the rules, but I mean, these are two different communities. We have a logic of interventions, uh, of course, different uh, in certain cases, complementary. How we can work with that? Please. Well, first of all, good afternoon and thank you, Magda. Um, Look, I think that there's a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of discussion on blending financial instruments, which is indeed a very relevant question. And Anna 
showed how some of the ideas that we have developed, some of the simplification that we have introduced in the new regulation that will govern cohesion policy and the horizon. So, for example, that resources can be transferred from cohesion policy to horizon so that a single set of rules applies, overcoming some of the difficulties we had in the past. And we are exploring uh, other other ideas such as joint calls or or uh, focusing part of the priorities under under uh, the widening component of Horizon into on uh, um, some of the uh, sectors that emerge from uh, from the regional from the regional strategies. I think, however, that at the end of the day, what really matters is that there is coherence and complementarity at the strategic level, because it's only by reasoning upstream on how to bring together the different communities and the different instruments, that then it's easy and easier uh, downstream to uh, finance uh, projects that make sense for both, uh, for both communities. And the best thing to establish this, uh, this, uh, this complementarity, this dialogue, is by, as Anna was saying, by bringing people together so that uh, the, the mission-oriented logic of Horizon Europe meets the more bottom-up uh, logic of the regional strategies that are developed in the context of cohesion policy. And so one of the things that we are uh, exploring and putting in place, in fact, is the possibility building, by the way, on the experience we had in the field of energy, in the field of environment, to bring together the two communities. So to bring together, having moments in which the managing authorities of the funds and uh, the, the, uh, the authorities and the actor, the stakeholders, in, in the research world are, are can discuss and exchange and understand uh, the, the different concern and, and find common ways and, uh, and, and, and learn from the strategies of each other. So I think that this is, is, really, is really the way to, to improve then the possibility very concretely of uh, financing common projects and, and at the service of both the research agenda and, and, and regional development. Thanks. Thanks, Nicola. So it's very good. We have from one side, we heard about the legislation and the rules uh, to apply. We heard from you the importance of making the two communities uh, joining together. And in fact, these two communities, uh, when they were implementing the synergies, came back to us and they were mentioning a lot state aid. And it seems that uh, exactly they were uh, thinking this was uh, a bottleneck. And we reported back to, to our colleagues from DG Competition, which have been uh, extremely listening and analyzing the situation. So what is your take from that and uh, yeah, on, the, on the synergies, how to simplify them? First, I think it's of course nice to be mentioned uh, frequently, but it's not nice to be mentioned as a bottleneck because nobody wants to be a bottleneck. Let me start by saying that of course whatever Horizon Europe itself is spending, it doesn't fall under stated role, rules, it doesn't uh, fall under stated control. What falls under stated rules is the spending of member states and other uh, national authorities. So we're talking about uh, national money, pure national money, but also the uh, structural fund monies which uh, member states are spending. And it's true that, of course, there are several links between Horizon Europe, Horizon 2020, and this national spending. And we have heard concerns uh, that stated rules could stand in the way of useful spending there. And that's why we have uh, worked very closely with our colleagues in, RT, in DGRTD, in DG Regio, and also other colleagues in other parts of the Commission, in order to ensure that in the future the useful spending for research and development can be done in a, as frictionless way as uh, possible. In, particularly, in particular, we have looked into this as part of the review of the, of the general block exemption regulation, or GBA, as it is often uh, called. So the regulation which allows member states to implement projects without the need to come to Brussels and notify the project and ask for our permission. So we aim at having uh, three changes which are very relevant for research in place by the end of the year so that for the uh, new MFF period they can enter into force. The first uh, is uh, concerning the seals of excellence, uh, which Anna already mentioned before. So we're talking about RDI projects, about Marie Sklodowska Curie projects, and also about the ERC proof of concept actions. And there, 
It's not about the projects which are funded directly from Horizon Europe, but if a project is good, it, be, it, it receives a seed of excellence, and then it is to be funded uh, at national level, then stated rules apply. And there we intend to put into place a block exemption so that member states can support these projects without a need to notify. And also we will, uh, will rely, uh, we will uh, we will use a lot the checks which have already been done by Horizon Europe so that at member states level not so much needs to be assessed anymore. The second area uh, concerns co-funded uh, research and development uh, projects, so programs where member states put money into programs uh, of Horizon Europe where technically stated rules apply, but there we think we can rely very much on the assessment done by our colleagues in uh, in, in DGRTD or the external uh, independent experts and therefore also there we think that uh, we can block exempt these uh, kind of projects so that no uh, separate approval under stated rules will be necessary in the future anymore. And the same applies to the third area which we are going to block exempt. Uh, these are uh, teaming actions under Horizon Europe also there if they are jointly funded and they are normally jointly funded they will be block exempted. In addition to this change of the general block exemption regulation, we are also carrying out the general fitness check of our rules. We have done in 2014 a major reform of stated rules and we are now checking whether they are still fit for purpose and the preliminary results also shows that we will probably uh, by end of next year have a targeted revision of the RDI framework which covers all kind of uh, national spending in the area of research and with this uh, we hope uh, we have uh, also contributed uh, to improve the RDI landscape in Europe. Thanks. Carl, thanks a lot. I think uh, from now on we will not talk about state aid as a bottleneck but as a facilitator. So. <laughs> So, uh, we break one moment for the questions. Uh, I see here there is one that is uh, most voted and I think it's relevant for the, our three speakers, Anna, Michele and uh, Nico, sorry, Nicola and Carl. So, uh, it says, is the first on how ensure that cohesion policy bodies are aware of horizon priorities, missions, partnership when developing programs. And I would adapt it, I mean, how we can, uh, is linked to the two communities, but in terms of information, how can we inf inform the cohesion uh, uh, people of what is happening in research and the opposite, and how we can inform of all this uh, simplification and uh, give legal certainty as well for the, for the state aid rules. Uh, who wants to start? I can start. Anna, please. Uh, first of all, um, missions and partnerships uh, have been already been well known in the member states, in particular those uh, authorities in the member states that indeed they are dealing with research and innovation. Nevertheless, missions have been also always communicated not as something that concerns only the research and innovation uh, community, but that concerns the other policies as well. So, the member states, authorities that they are dealing with Br Brussels, they are already aware. Nevertheless, the idea here is whether it will be possible together with our colleagues from the Giregio to join forces and to go out for outreach events in the member states where we were able at the same time to inform about the opportunities and possibility given under Horizon Europe program through missions, through partnerships, but at the same time to explain how synergies in practice will be implemented. We are about to, to establish the legal framework, but as you know, the, the devil is always in the details. So it is very important to have a clarity and explain how and why they have the advantage to use this possibility of synergies. So I really count a lot on my colleagues also in Digirigio, so that we pull resources, energy, and we work together in order to provide a package which is going to be communicated to the, the cohesion funding authorities about research and innovation possibilities under Horizon Europe, how they complement the priorities under the cohesion policy, and how in practice synergies could be implemented through missions, through partnerships, but also through other instruments that are available under research and innovation program. Thank you, Anna. So, Nicola, you go next. Well, if you want just to add that there is there is a before and a during. Before, I will, I'm not particularly concerned about the knowledge the member state have of the mechanics and of the new rules that uh, simplify, in fact, for them. 
uh, their life in, in, in bringing together different funding sources. Then, the, still the before, now we are in the process of starting the discussion with member states and negotiation with member states on the new programs of cohesion policy for the next uh, for the next uh, seven years. And obviously, the, the documents that member states produce are discussed within the Commission. There is a way to 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 uh, to, to check and bring in all the different sensitivities and concern and to uh, go back to the member state. And this is what the negotiation is about, to try to focus and, uh, and, uh, and, and make European priorities more present in the way in which member state, uh, in, in which member state uh, uh, reflect. Uh, and then there is a during, which is the, the moment while, while we are implementing the programs. And even there, and this is the idea that uh, we had uh, uh, with uh, with uh, with Anna to have uh, to to bring uh, to bring the regularly once twice we'll have to see uh, per year the, the the communities together so that they, they see each other what each other is doing and uh, and ensure that this debate remains alive during the programming period and it's not just a one shot at the beginning so I, I'm I, I'm relatively confident that the mechanics and the mechanism for ensuring this this awareness raising and dialogue with member state is there. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Nicola. And in fact, I think uh, as well, the same way we are, uh, of course, collaborating within the Commission services, I think it's important as well that there is a dialogue at national level between the different departments as well, responsible for the different uh, uh, fields. Uh, Karl, from your side. From my side. Uh, well, the, the reform we are doing under, under, under stated rules is, of course, not uh, dropping out of the sky, so it's not a surprise move for mm -hmm. member states. Uh, but uh, we have been consulting this widely. We have, been, we have, we have done two public consultations with uh, uh, all kinds of stakeholders. We have, two, had, have had two rounds of advisory committee meetings with member states. So all this is known uh, to the community out out there in the member states. Of course, this also needs to trickle down from the central level to the to the uh, managing authority, more at regional and local level. And there we, to be frank, we rely very much on our, on our colleagues uh, in, in the other services who have these, these networks. Uh, however, we have in the past, and we will continue to participate in outreach events uh, organized. Uh, we have a system uh, which allows, for example, interpretation questions. So if uh, authorities have questions about how to interpret our rules, how to apply them, we are open to this. Uh, but uh, to be frank, I think in stated terms, uh, it is still a relatively centralized system in member states, so there are national coordination authorities, uh, and it's also their responsibility of ensuring that in the respective member states, uh, the rules and the possibilities are known uh, at the different level which are spending public money. Very good, Carl. Thanks a lot. So, indeed, information, joint work from our side. But now let's move to the practitioners, to those that are implementing synergies. Savrula, you have been uh, a aficionados of our community of practice for the seal of excellence. You have been the one, one of those uh, uh, believing that these uh, synergies can be implemented. Uh, but uh, one question was about not only informing the managing authorities, but how we convince why they should be doing. So what was the motivation from your side to implement uh, the SEAL scheme? And you will tell us more about it. And uh, do you think that then these new developments will help you? Please. Good afternoon. Um, for us, in the beginning, we started, we went into this effort because it was uh, strongly recommended to us by the monitoring committee of the operational program that uh, uh, funds money for research. Uh, however, soon we realized that this is the way for the future. We realized that more and more projects will be coming from you, from Europe, from Horizon Europe, to be funded by us. So uh, that's why we realized that we, we have to do that, and we are doing it as you pretty well know. And here you have asked us to recommend something to the other participants, what to do, the other managing authorities. What to do, maybe it appears basic and simplistic to us, but there are three things. One is study. You have to be great and well, sufficiently, more than sufficiently familiar with all the rules that have to do with state aid, with GBER, with the, the fund, 
whatever. Plus, you have to know what is uh, um, the substance and the intentions of the different calls behind Seal of Excellence as a mission instrument as we had uh, in the past. Because only when we realize the intentions of the original call, call we can realize what to expect from our um, um, the, the, the holders, the, the Seal of Excellence holders. Uh, Right now, as I can see the, the, the new provision, what I have seen in different drafts and different editions that circulate, we don't see much, in, not much improvement, but we don't see much that will help us upstream, that is in uh, setting up the course and uh, deciding what, uh, which seal of excellence holders are eligible for funding under rules. We can do that. We know how to do it. However, where we need help and assistance and guidance and uh, collaboration with you is to figure out um, the monitoring, what to do while monitoring uh, these uh, projects. And I have to tell you, you probably know that, that the seal of excellence holders had high expectations and we had to play them down. We, I mean, these people were expecting a higher um, intensity rates than the ones who could give under DJ, uh, also to get uh, uh, advantages, uh, money, I mean, advantage uh, with no guarantee. Plus, they sort of expect less strict monitoring rules. For somehow we believe that the horizon rules are lighter than the origin than the rules we uh, apply here. What I see that might help is this um, um, uh, the uh, simplified cost approach, but still we have some apprehension. We see that the projects that come from Europe have high budgets, like five, ten millions more. We are not accustomed to that. I mean, they, they seem dis disproportional to the, uh, to the um, projects we run during for, for the national call. So, uh, I mean, is, there is a question there. Do you think that the simplified cost approach is applicable for something that costs five, ten millions? We don't have, um, we're not familiar with this uh, method and this number, and we will see it with. And something else that we shouldn't forget and always keep in mind is that we have to inform and educate the final recipients because this is the final effort and they have to know what exactly is the seal of excellence what exactly to expect and what is at stake here it is very important for them and for the success of this of this effort thank you thanks stavrula uh, as always extremely enriching uh, your uh, discussion with you and again uh, uh, you highlighted important points i move now to uh, andrea kudmera from slovenia you are coordinator of uh, a teaming project uh, innovation renew centers of excellence we have been mentioning teaming in fact also in the state aid discussion so what is your experience with teaming which is uh, really creating the synergies between the two funds and uh, what uh, how do you see the new the new rules yeah thank you um yeah i've been coordinating a nino renew project which is combining 10 partners from slovenia and including one german partner from germany and going through all these uh, uh, rules of one and the other program of financing we somehow succeed and we established the new research institute that i am director of and uh, what i would emphasize is that this joint financing enabled us to establish the new research institute institute that is uh, non-for-profit, private, with its own organizational structure, where we were able, with the support of both financing programs, uh, created the environment that we made Inno Renew attractive to researchers from around the globe. And today we are 
employing 62 persons and almost half of them are coming from abroad and uh, we were able to continue our presence in the European Union and beyond with uh, some top level researchers which would not be possible if we wouldn't have the chance to uh, to acquire research infrastructure including a new building of the center that is currently under construction and it's a demonstration of our uh, work, which is the use of renewable materials in the built environment. So I, it's a very positive experience, although it was, of course, a lot of challenges on the way. But uh, today uh, we are really proud to, to say that we have a network of our partners, collaborators from around Europe. It is over 400 research institutions as well as uh, uh, industry, which uh, I find it very important, especially when discussing the state aid regulations. And uh, I was really pleased to hear uh, the, the upcoming new, pr uh, new program, how it's going to be dealt with. Um, it wouldn't be possible without uh, making the, the joint ventures between the national priorities, smart specialization in Slovenia. And today uh, we are even more aware of the importance that we work together and that we are also enhancing the research inf infrastructure of existing institutions or the established institutions that actually supported the establishment of Inno Renew Center of Excellence and the impacts are going way beyond the uh, Inno Renew Center of Excellence. And uh, this is, for example, the coordinator of a uh, Horizon teaming project proposal, Inno Renew, uh, established a new uh, PhD study program, which is starting now on the 1st of October with nine PhD students coming also from out of Europe uh, to join us and to learn about renewable materials and their use in the healthy built environment. Another example is that with the infrastructure funds that were obtained, another partner, Civil Engineering Institute of Slovenia, is building a fire laboratory and was successfully obtaining an Eracher uh, pro uh, proposal or funds. And so we are really, um, combining you know the the experience and together uh, streaming towards the excellence in the field of uh, building materials and the renewable materials but besides this i must emphasize that Inno renew was able to uh, obtain over the uh, 6 million euros of additional uh, projects which would not be possible if we wouldn't be attractive partner because of the infrastructure obtained, the state aid infrastructure, uh, the, not, not state aid, I'm sorry, the, the state of the art infrastructure <laughs> and the researchers from around Europe and beyond. Andrea, thanks a lot. I, I think you really made the case of what are all the effects and impacts of uh, using uh, all the different possibilities together and not last the attraction of talents, which is one of the important things as well in our upcoming era communication. So I turn immediately to Monica Barney. You are vice president of the region Tuscany, but also president of this uh, the jury working group. Um, this links uh, very much to what uh, Nicola was saying of making the two communities uh, working together, communicating, and you have been launching an initiative to, to create this, this networking. Can you please tell us more about it? Yes. Thank you, Magda, for this question, and thank you for in, inviting us. Um, two for you, as you told, is chairing the working group on synergies among European uh, Union funds. And uh, the aim of this group is to create a participatory discussion on synergies facilitated by the Brussels liaison offices, working with all key Italian actors actively involved in the future of the programming period. The, first, the second aim is to stimulate co-design process between the European Commission and the Italian managing authorities 
at both national and regional level. So the group decided to elaborate a vademecum that was presenting that was presented last week. Uh, the vademecum is a guide in progress that will be constantly updated and it will accompany the closing of the negotiation on the budget and the subsequent implementation of the different types of synergies we have identified. Alternative synergies, sequential synergies, cumulative synergies, and synergies based on voluntary transfers. Uh, this document is uh, addressed to the regional and national managing authorities and uh, contains uh, the main legislative references on uh, synergies in the EU funding programs, an update on the negotiation and a list of best practices of synergies created in Italy. Uh, I think that the Bademecum is it's a very important document because um, our, uh, uh, the, the difficulties for managing authorities to implement synergies, but also some successful experiences are highlighted. So we have collected examples from the Italian Ministry of the Economic Development and some Italian regions and provinces and from Tuscan University and the National Research Center. We hope that these best practices will inspire other managing authorities with concrete ideas for future planning. And uh, the final chapter of the Vademecum is dedicated to the synergies between cohesion and recovery funds. I think this chapter is also very important because it makes us understand that the 700 million of the recovery cannot be detached from the cohesion policies. So please me, let me congratulate the group that contributed in a choral way to the drafting of the Vademecum. And uh, the Vademecum will be available in the coming days in the APRE website. Uh, an updated version will be released in November uh, 2020, because as I told you, it's a guide in progress. progress. I believe, I strongly believe that uh, a network, including uh, representatives of managing authorities and research authorities, can contribute to break silos from the beginning, supported by a continuous exchange of communication between European level, national and regional level. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Uh, thanks for uh, explaining this initiative, extremely useful, and links very well to the questions that indeed I want now to ask to the three of you, uh, the last speak speaker, sorry, the practitioner, uh, because here we have uh, from all opportunities presented to link up cohesion policies and Horizon Europe, indeed you mentioned that uh, in the guide, and uh, so we were discussing the sequential synergies, uh, the seal of excellence, uh, the possi new possibility for transfer, uh, the joining up of uh, partnerships, so there are all these uh, different possibilities opened in Horizon Europe, so where do you see uh, the most potential, where would you see say, okay, please, if you have to advise a managing authority, this is the, the, the way to start. What is, uh, what is your suggestion? Please, uh, one of the three, uh, well, this is for the three of you, so I don't know. Stavrula, you want to start? But uh, shortly. <laughs> I believe, I believe in the seal of excellence. I'm becoming, uh, I mean, I'm becoming a ambassador of the seal of excellence. It, it needs effort and I... Uh, some of the companies that are the hold of the vaccines are really worth it and they are really trying it. Uh, so I am free. Why not start from there? Is is somehow plainer because it does not involve a um, general uh, a group policies. It has to do with the particular or particular 
a certain, I mean, a, a specific number of Silovex land holders. This is okay. my suggestion. Thank you, Stavrula. Uh, Andreja, what is your uh, suggestion? You are not a managing authorities, but I think you are closely in contact with them. From your User point of view, the end, yeah, of the, I think that it should be used for enhancing the program in, uh, financing by Horizon Europe, for example, by Mercury co-found, where there is a need for research uh, material costs in uh, financing, and could be uh, really boosting and enhancing. The, the potentials for development of uh, young researchers when they would receive beyond uh, the financing of their uh, personnel costs, also suspend, suspension, it, it, uh, the financing of infrastructure needed for their developments, as well as the material costs that in certain cases can be quite, uh, quite high. For as, as an example of uh, combining mm -hmm. both. Thank you. And Monica, what is your view? Well, I think that um, the seal of, of excellence is one. It's, it's, a good, uh, it's a good way to start, but also uh, the partnership, it's another good way. And uh, what I mainly uh, suggest is to, um, to, 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 to be inspired by the best practices to see what the other did, what uh, other managing authorities uh, what were able to do and uh, to plan and to be inspired by the work of others. This is the reason why we, we decided to draft the, the Vademecum. Thanks a lot. So here we are, we are almost at the end, but for me it's important as well as a wrap up that uh, we hear from you the advice that you might have uh, for, uh, uh, for implementing successful synergies, having listened to all what was discussed today. But I will do the reverse order, so we start again from you. You were already giving some advice, but maybe just three words. What is your take uh, from this uh, session and uh, what would be the things to, to advise, uh, in that case, the managing authorities and in our case as well, uh, other policymakers? Please, um, Andrea, we go this way. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I would say uh, you should continue with the teaming and the widening program because I believe it really is uh, giving us opportunities in the widening countries and uh, definitely continue with the teaming that can go beyond the teaming too, Thank I would you. say. Thanks. Monica, please. Well, I think that uh, what is very important is cooperation and uh, it's also important uh, communication to work and and communicate together more and more more and more often not, don't work in a separate way break the silos and uh, mainly have long term strategic planning i think this is very important yeah this is about the strategic thinking uh, stavrula Study, collaborate, be uh, flexible. Collaborate with the Seal of Excellence community of practice. Thanks a lot. We, we need to study. Nicola, now to you. What, uh, what would be the advice or your take from the, from the session? What is your uh, last words? <laughs> Well, look, I think that what uh, Stavula, Andrea, and Monica have shown is that things are happening. And there are a lot of experiences out there of how to combine instruments and how to do things. And so maybe it's just a question of bring, bringing together these, these best practices, as Monica was saying, and, uh, and diffuse them, starting with the Vademeco. Yeah, that's a good idea. Karl? Yeah. To you? Uh, let me a bit uh, take up on the first question which we got. Uh, and we, uh, we have been collaborating a lot uh, here in the Commission because we heard that there are obstacles and things are not uh, functioning uh, very well. 
but I would like to, to put this back also to member states and uh, national uh, and regional authorities. We also hear that things are sometimes not working optimally there, and we have the research community, we have the structural funds people, we have the competition or state experts, but they are not always talking to each other on a regular basis. So I think uh, my, my, my advice, if I'm allowed to, do, to, to, to give it, would be that to replicate what we have been trying here uh, in Brussels, also at the national level, uh, meaning uh, to talk really to each other and to try to put things together. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Very good advice. And the last word to Anna, please. So what comes to my mind is that place-based innovation is a, a key and it is very important for the recovery of Europe. I think uh, take the opportunities for synergies to, to be helped for this place-based innovation. Thanks, Anna. I don't have anything more to add because you said it all. I'm just uh, saying a big thanks to all our speakers and to the audience that has been uh, listening to us. We were not able to go through all the questions, but I see a lot of interest uh, in, uh, in the topics. Uh, and definitely we will come back uh, with more information, uh, more support, uh, and, uh, and we will need as well your feedback on that. So thanks to everybody, and I wish you a nice continuation for these wonderful R&I days. <laughs>